Hey everyone, I'm Jamie, developer at Bite Me Games. If you've seen our second devlog, you may remember how I was responsible for our tests and gushing about how easy and intuitive they are to implement. Just don't use this, which, well, spoiler alert, seeing as I just learned it, I did not. So why do we need testing? Let's set the stage. You're developing your game and find some really obscure bug that is not only annoying to reproduce, but it takes a while. Assigning a road to a worker, you always have to place buildings, add a road, give yourself the resources, and only then can you assign the worker. This can be quite a tedious process, especially if you need to keep doing this. Every new fix you try, you again have to reproduce it, again costing a lot of your precious time. And not only that, suppose you fix the bug now. You still have to test it often to see it doesn't re reappear due to some other change in your code and the butterfly effect magically impacting the bug. Now, wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to automate it so you can spend your time actually working on your game instead of bug testing? As you've probably figured out by now after hearing me talk, it should be no surprise that there is a better way. Introducing unit and integration tests. A quick prerequisite before we dive into this video, there are a few terms you should know. First off, there are two major types of tests. Um, you've got unit tests and you've got integration tests. A unit test allows you to test a specific function or part of your code without having to worry about the memory state of the entire game. You can mock certain classes, um, which basically means you replace them with fake classes that have the same interface to make sure you are 100% in control of that one piece of code you're testing. This not only means that you don't have to mess around with unrelated things, but also that your test scenario is always the same, which is ideally what you always want when testing. The second major test type is an integration test. These are tests that test a bigger picture, such as, for example, in our game Forge Industry, this type uh, or of test could test that a worker successfully picks up an item, carries it to another station. This doesn't mean that you can only test for the beginning and end states, but also all steps in between, since you can pause the test and execute logic for each frame. Integration tests can be massive, and we will not go into them specifically in this video, but all information given around, uni given around unit tests can basically be used in integration tests, as they're basically the same, but just bigger. Now, both of these tests also have two subcategories, in Unity specifically. You've got play mode tests and there are edit mode tests. Don't worry, there isn't a lot to say about this one, so no information overload this time. A play mode test is used when you're actually testing game code that requires Unity to be running, such as, for example, uh, button clicks, game events, and so on. An edit mode test, on the other hand, is like any regular c -sharp test for those that ex have experience with those. You just create your objects, execute your logic, and assert your results. Now that we've established some basic knowledge, let's get into the actual tests. I'll be giving actual code examples here, so feel free to go back and have another listen if at some point you forgot the differences between the tests during this video. And if you find this video is a bit too hard to follow along, be sure to also check out the accompanying blog post for a write-up of how to do these tests. You can find the link for that down below in the description. So, writing edit mode tests. Let's start with creating a simple edit mode test. If you've written normal c -sharp tests before, chances are all this is already pre-existing knowledge to you. If not, follow along. Here we will be using NUnit. This is a testing framework for c -sharp, which is what we use with the Unity engine. This is just a simple Nugget package, um, so you can easily edit it to your project. NUnit is also quite powerful in that it allows you to specify specific code blocks that can be run before or after each test, or some other specific times. Then, once we have NUnit installed, we can start creating the actual tests. So, to write a test, we need a few things. First of all, we are going to need a test class. I'll be taking our tests for our game's translation system as an example here. So the class will be named Localization System Tests. Next up, we need to write a method that will handle our test. It's convention to name the method something that clearly explains what it is testing. Here, we're going to be testing the English language of our translation system. So, we'll name the method something like localization system tests underscore English. Above this method, we'll write the test annotation, which indicates this method should be ran when we're running all our tests. Note that the annotation is different for each testing framework. Since we're using NUnit here, we will be using the test annotation. But make sure to check the documentation for your specific test framework if you're using something different. 
You should create a separate method for each test case, and even sometimes multiple methods for one case, especially if it's a complex method that handles many things. You can, for example, have a method that tests the success case and the failure handling. Now we can move on to writing our actual test method. There are generally three stages in a test method. The first stage is the arrange stage. This is where you set up everything that's needed to complete your test, such as any objects that need to be made, or if you're working with a database, anything that needs to be inserted into the database for a certain test case. Basically anything that's needed for your test scenario. After everything's set up, we move on to the act stage. Here the actual method you're trying to test is executed. Lastly, we assert our test. Here we check, assert, that the new state is what we expect it to be. Or we can check if the method that we're testing gave the correct response. So how can this be applied to our specific use case now? For our arrangement methods, we only need to set English as our target for our translation system. So that's fairly easy. Next, for our X part, we need to call our translation system and get the results, since we're going to be testing that. The words we'll be translating is purely for testing. And finally, we want to make sure our methods return to translation we expected. We don't want to, for example, return the wrong language. We wouldn't want it to translate French, for example. For this, we can use assert.r equals to compare the expected value with the given value. There are many different asserts you can do, r equals is just one of them, but you can all find that in your documentation for your test framework. Here's how our complete class should look now. And that's it, our first test is done. Want something a little more challenging now? Time to write a play mode test. First, I had planned on using our test for deleting buildings as an example, but I'm pretty sure you just become discouraged if I try to explain that. If you really do want the semi-explanation, check out our previous deck vlog where it's explain at least a little bit. So instead, we'll be using the same kind of translation system for the test. But this time, we'll be checking if Unity automatically translates labels, instead of manually calling the translation methods. Making the class starts the same way as a normal edit mode test. As you can see, it is very similar, but there are a few key differences. First of all, the test annotation. We'll be using the Unity test annotation instead here. This is because this type of test requires Unity to run, as we'll be making game objects in code that Unity will use. Second, you'll notice we're returning iEnumerator instead of void. This is because otherwise we can't use the yield operator. I'll explain why we need that soon, but just keep that in mind. And again, just like we did in our previous edit mode tests, we'll arrange all the objects. And as you can see, there are already a lot of differences here. We first start by creating a game object, which we give the name SUT which stands for system under test, which is just a convention. You can technically name it whatever you want to. Next, we need to add the localized text component, as that is what our library, our GUI library, TextMess Pro uses for translation. We can do that using the add component method. And finally, for the, act, uh, for the arrange part, we need to set the localized string on the localized text component to a new localized string object. Then we can move on to our actual act part. Now, this might look strange at first glance, because we're not actually calling any methods, but this is what it's doing. It is making sure that one frame passes in Unity. This is because Unity needs a frame to actually render the component and add the text. And then finally, all we have to do to assert the test text now is to retrieve the component and check if the text matches to what we expected. Hopefully, now you've learned a little bit more about tests and how to write them throughout this video. Tests are both wonderful and can save you a lot of time and effort. And at the same time, they can be really frustrating and annoying to write initially, and possibly future maintenance. But trust me, buy through the pain, because you won't regret writing them as they will save your behind in the future. And I, that's a promise. So that brings me to the end of my quick little tutorial or overview of how to write tests. I hope I've managed to make your life a little bit easier. If you've managed to stick around until now, why don't you make sure that you're subscribed and hit the little bell icon as it really helps us out. Apart from that, that's been all for me this week and I'll see you in the next video.